Hey, Catherine. Hey. Did you hear? I'm sure you heard. Bill Gates and Melinda Gates are getting a divorce. Yes, I heard that. Okay, so that's what I wanted to talk about on this episode. Okay. Because we are real estate, money, and... Marriage. So I think there's a big section of money and marriage to talk about there. So I went and did Mm -hmm. some research. We have two articles that I want to share with you today and get your feedback on. Why being rich may increase your odds of divorce. First, how's that headline hit you? Um, Well, I think there's money problems at any income and any net worth um, level. I think it's relative. Um, so it's it's like a little surprising looking at them because they're so extremely wealthy, but um, you know, not shocking. Yeah. So I guess why when you say there's money problems at any level, I, I remember there's a book, The Millionaire Next Door. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. And I feel like there's some data in there that said something crazy, like ninety two percent of millionaires that they studied had not gone through a divorce. Am I making that? I'm probably making that number up, but wasn't it extremely high? I'm not sure it was that book, but no, I think it was that book. I think you're right. It's like an indicator of wealth to not get divorced, which makes sense because you're losing half of whatever you built or created or wealth that you do have. Right. So you're at an advantage right there. Right. So I guess I was surprised and surprised to see this being rich may increase your odds of divorce. And then you also saying, yeah, that, that there's money problems at every issue. Well, and it could be just that um, people who are uh, have the means and are unhappy in their marriage are just quicker to um, get divorced because yeah. they can, because they can afford the another household, um, you know, two sets of certain things versus people who maybe want to get divorced but feel like they can't afford it, just stay miserable together. Right. And so I think that's kind of what I found out. I think you're hitting the nail on the head as I went through this. So let's take a look at some of these articles. Uh, First, check this out. The greater mismatch between a couple's credit scores, the more likely they are to separate within the first five years, according to research by the Federal Reserve Board. What do you think about that? Okay. Okay. Okay just makes me think the credit score really is a pretty good indicator of their financial credit health. score. Hey, if you're thinking about getting married, ask for that person's credit score. Yeah, run their credit. Dating profiles should have their credit score on them. Yeah, while you're at it, do a background check. Don't be swiping to see more pictures. Swipe to see that credit score. Right. Just <laughs> run them through like a tenant background check. Yeah. Um, just for fun. Not for fun. For your lifelong... Yeah. Soulmate. In order to make a you're, serious you're decision. So, hey, hey you run it to, to choose a tenant. You should run it to choose a spouse. There you go. Mm-hmm. Those with the highest credit scores were most likely to form long-lasting committed relationships. And the better your financial footing and higher your credit score, when a committed relationship starts, the less likely you are to break up after the first few years, the study showed. Did you know my credit score when you um, married me? I knew it was high, and, you know, mine was low. But not super low. Uh, I knew it wasn't great. We could go into a whole story about what happened when we bought the first house, and I went to try to get credit to buy the appliances. Remember that? Yeah, maybe we'll save that for the next one. We'll save that. All right, so the story goes on. Um, What I really wanted to get to is actually this um, because what this article over here the mystery of billionaires long marriages but what i thought was interesting was first this line um this article was written in 2015 okay mm-hmm. so before bezos and right, Bill gates were right right right, right. Okay. exactly but I thought this line was interesting. Bill Gates, who married Melinda 21 years ago, appears to have one of those marriages so solid that if I discovered the two were splitting up, I would feel let down, as if the world had become less dependable place. Hmm. Well, we already knew the world was less dependable after <laughs> yeah. last year. Welcome to 2020. <clears throat> yeah. 20. 
21. I'm not sure I would have ever felt like that. I don't know who wrote this, but... So the as I was researching, what I was trying to figure out is how often do billionaires get divorced? Like that mm-hmm. was the percentage I was looking for. And this is the article. This is really the only article I could find. So if you go down the Forbes billionaires list, a weird pattern starts to emerge. More than 40% of all marriages end in divorce. So it seems like you're not safe from having a divorce just because you're a billionaire. More money does not equate to a lifelong marriage. Well, I think that the conversations are the same. The fights are probably the same about money at different um, income levels and net worth levels. If you're kind of an average person, you know, a husband might be upset at a wife because she's going out for a boozy lunch with the girls too often, spending too much money. But if you're a billionaire, hey, did you really need that third private jet? Yeah, I needed the jet. Or I have a feeling what's happening, like when you look at, I don't remember Jeff Bezos' wife, but she like gave all of it away. Like maybe it's, hey, why aren't we donating to this? Why aren't we donating to that? Right. We have all this money and there's starving kids in Africa. The yeah. fights are just different. I, the fights are just different. Final takeaways from this. Billionaires and marriage doesn't... I mean, my biggest takeaway is credit score. Starting out, become mm-hmm. a credit score, and don't become a billionaire. I think those are my takeaways. If you want to have a happy, successful marriage, find someone with, with a good credit score, and then don't try to become a billionaire. A millionaire is probably okay. Yeah, become multi-millionaires together. Thanks for listening to the Real Estate Money and Marriage Podcast with Catherine and Darren. And when you're ready, here's four things that you can do right now. Number one, make sure you're subscribed to this show, whether you're watching or listening. If you're watching, you can also click the like button, click the thumbs up button. Number two, if you're a first time home buyer, get a free guide, seven costly mistakes home buyers make. Visit costlymistakeshomebuyersmake.com. Number three, if you're selling your home, get access to our Get Sell Ready Guide and Checklist. It'll show you how to get your home ready without spending a fortune or wasting your nights and weekends updating and remodeling your home. Visit GetSellReady.com. And number four, start a smart moves conversation with us. Get clarity about what to do next. Get your questions answered, your concerns taken care of, and an action plan customized to your timeline. You can schedule a call with us at SmartMovesCall.com or start a chat with us. Visit M.me slash Persinger Group.